30, so we'll go ahead and start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Um, Coach Guard? <coughs> Coach Guard? Yeah. Would you want to come up here and give us a little overview and tell us what? I mean, I see all these wrestlers and some uh, faces that I saw only on my TV screen, but um, I'm very. Uh, very, everyone on the board and, and the whole community is uh, thrilled with the progress that's been made this year and we'd just like for you to uh, share out. Okay, I can do that. You want to come up and help me, Brady? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expected. I did not expect I was going to That's all right. You, you can wing it. Um, <laughs> So our team ended, I'll just give you a quick overview. Team ended up 14 and three this year. Uh, we lost to Warren Central by three points. Uh, we lost in our team state finals by three points to Tell City. Uh, and then we lost to Western uh, in a dual meet um, in January. Uh, and then um, we went on a pretty good roll. Uh, our kids were conference champs, back-to-back uh, -back conference champs, back-to-back -back sectional champs. We beat Western uh, for a regional championship, first ever in school history. Um, and then we won Fort Wayne Semi-State, which is also the first ever in school's history. Um, interesting little tidbit on that, uh, the last three Fort Wayne Semi-State champions have come from our regional. So two years ago it was Western, last year it was Oak Hill, and then this year it was Rochester. So um, all 1A and 2A schools. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, obviously we had a lot of just individual records that were broken this year. We had. Uh, seven conference champions, which is the most in school history. We had seven sectional champions, uh, most in school history. We took 13 kids to our, uh, sorry, 11 kids to our regional, most in school history. Um, if anybody, if I'm missing anything, Coach Holloway or Coach Beck, jump in. Um, then we had eight uh, semi-state qualifiers, most in school history. Uh, and then we had four state qualifiers, uh, which is the most also in school history. Uh, Marshall was our... Um, uh, well, I'll start with Brady. Brady, uh, Beck, Alex Demi, uh, Wyatt Davis were all semi-state runner-ups. Again, most kids we've ever had in the finals. Uh, and then Marshall was our lone semi-state champion. Um, if you saw kind of my story on Facebook and you've seen some of the videos, uh, we needed Marshall to win his match in the finals for us to win the uh, semi-state championship. Adam Central was up on us by two points. He had to win for us to win, and he won in overtime. Uh, what was it? Three to 42? 42, yeah. I think it was, um, with a takedown. And um, so that put us up two and a half points uh, for our first ever semi state championship. Uh, and then we went down to what is now Gamebridge Fieldhouse uh, in Indianapolis. Um, it's overlapping. Two weeks ago, um, we were able to go down early with weather. Um, so we ended up going down early. Our kids had a great time. Um, we had Wyatt, uh, Wyatt Davis wrestle. Is that me? No. Hit mute online. Okay. Am I okay? Yep. Uh, Wyatt Davis wrestled 113 pounds, wrestled really well for us, but came up short on Friday. Lost his first round match. Uh, Alex Deming uh, wrestled well, and but lost his first round match as well on Friday. And then we had Brady and Marshall uh, both won their Friday night matches, which pushed them in the uh, top eight, uh, which is again another record to uh, two state place winners in the same year. Um, and uh, of course, then Brady ended up placing uh, sixth for us. Uh, wrestled really, really well in, in the state tournament. Represented Rochester very well. And then, of course, we know uh, Marshall was our first ever state champion in Rochester wrestling history. So, there you go. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the board, 
congratulations, Coach. And uh, congratulations, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, pardon me. Uh, well done, an amazing season. Um, I had never watched a full wrestling uh, match in my life until the night of the state final, and I was actually bouncing out of my seat cheering for you. And <laughs> I've never met you, but I'd know you anywhere because I just felt like I just got to know, know you, Marshall, and congratulations on your, your state win. That was just phenomenal. And Brady, well done. Uh, Alex, well done. I didn't catch the name of the... Why? Why? I, I watched. I watched a clip there, but well done, guys. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, just for your season in general, um, you know this is uh, this is the epitome of zebra pride. We're all proud of you, and we're proud of your coaches. And uh, and uh, what what matters? I mean, it's wonderful to win a state championship. But when we hear wonderful things about what nice young men and ladies you are. Um, that is uh, every bit as important. So keep up the good work and onward and upward. We thank, thank you for your time. You. We have a middle school meet we're getting ready to go to. So. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Let's go watch your movie. Yeah. 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 Do your homework. Yeah. 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 Tell you, that's that's like the favorite part of being on a board is to be able to recognize kids who are doing great things and uh, we hope to do more of that in the future um, there are lots of kids doing amazing things all over the place and we need to make sure that we pull them in and, and let them know how important that is to us so we will move ahead with the consent agenda um, Approval of the minutes from January 24th, 2022, and the finance meeting and regular board meeting. Um, approval also of the minutes from the February 1st, 2022 study session. Approval of the minutes from February 21st, 2022, regular board meeting. And certification of the February 21st, 2022 executive session. Are there any questions or comments from the board? A couple of corrections. Uh, on the 24th, the uh, item 10 uh, says that uh, on the Richmond Township seat, the Board of Trustees has been clarified and has a perpetuity. Perpetuity. What is that one? Per perpetuity. Perpetuity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, clause that ensures the township to be permanently maintained a seat. Uh, we talked about that clause, but it's that's not true. We didn't declare that true or anything. Uh, I was going to find the original document and I did find the original and there's nothing like that in that. So I moved to strike that line. And on the uh, February 1st, I wasn't able to attend that study session, but it has me as present. And uh, on item 4B, it has me making a statement. I would uh, move to strike that since I wasn't here to make a statement. Thank you, Tom, for those corrections. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else? Okay, at this point, I entertain a motion to uh, approve the, the minutes of the board meetings and the study session and the executive session as presented and as amended. So moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Thank you, Joe. Motion passes seven to zero. Next, we move on to the funds report and uh, the, excuse me, the financial report. And, um, do you go through a lot of paper? A lot of paper? Uh huh. It yes. took me a ton of paper just to print it out. That's all I was wondering. <laughs> and, and I wasn't even sure I had it in order. But Todd, if you would share with us. Certainly. Um, for the education fund in January, um, we have receipts of $1,044,085.39, expenses of $956,388.15, 
and the cash balance in the education fund at the end of January was $752,409.85. Debt service fund, we had receipts of $57,230. There were no expenses. Cash balance in the debt service fund at the end of January is $985,243.15. And in the operations fund, we had receipts of $9,466.82. We had expenses of $628,952.50. And left us the cash balance of $452,782.13. <coughs> that's that's up to you. I would suggest with there being so many different items to do it individually. Okay. So, uh, any board members have any uh, questions or comments about the uh, funds report? All right. I would all uh, would request a motion. Motion approved. Second. Okay. Uh, what did, motion to accept the funds? Yes. As, as, as listed. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Thank you, Joe. Seven to zero. Moving on, transfer the approval or the approval of the transfer of ESSER funds. Okay. Um, I presented this at the study session on the first. I know it's been a while. Um, the figures haven't changed. Um, at the bottom, though, I did add. Um, as requested, a breakdown of the funds per the monies per the ESSER funds. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and we're asking permission to move those expenses to the respective ESSER funds. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? I would entertain a motion at this time. So moved. Second. Okay. We kind of need to state what we're moving. We're moving to. What? Transfer the funds. Transfer the funds as requested. Yes. All right. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. And again, it passes seven to zero. <clears throat> Approval of the year end inter intra funds transfers. Okay, so I, the business office, office asks for permission, and usually it's in November for uh, year end. Um, operations and part of that is the appropriations transfers and you're not allowed to have any negative balances in the appropriations so that is the intra fund um, transfer portion of this the total transfers of the three uh, taxable fund or three uh, main funds is two million four ninety four thousand five hundred thirty nine dollars and twenty nine cents um, and this year um, we usually have the at least one of these but this year um, there were two other uh, intra or inter fund transfers. The first one listed is um, a dollar, one dollar twenty seven cents from the education fund into the fund that we use for the teacher appreciation grant. Um, Brenda has a spreadsheet that we get as close as possible to that amount from the state. We are usually over anywhere from five cents to a dollar twenty seven, so that covers um, that amount. And the other item listed is money from debt service to textbooks to cover the uh, portion of curricular reimbursement we do not get from the state. That's budgeted in our debt service um, budget every year from the DOGF. So. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions for Todd on the year end intra <coughs> and inter and intra fund transfers? At this time, I would entertain a, a motion then for approval of the 2021 year end inter and intra fund transfers. So moved. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. And the motion passes seven to zero. The next item number uh, four is approval of the 2022 disposition of checks, district outstanding checks voided. So per statute, any check that's two years old or older on December 31st is to be voided out. Um, and this year we had six total checks, totaling $760.39. <coughs> okay. Questions? Were any of those reissued later or? No. Just, okay. Any others? Any other 
And I would, then I would entertain a motion to approve the uh, 2022 disposition of checks, district outstanding checks voided. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Next is the release of funds for the estate of Mr. Tom Reed. Thank you. So I've had the honor of working with um, Tom L. Reed and uh, on behalf of his estate, Mark Brubaker has been um, his executor of his estate. Tom was an employee of Rochester Schools and when he passed, he left a little over $550,000 to Rochester Schools. In his will, he outlined just a few specifics that he would like Rochester Schools to follow. The first is that we would um, uh, work with the Community Foundation for an Endowment Scholarship Fund, that the specific name of that fund be the Tom L. Reed Memorial Scholarship. So I have been working with Brian Johnson and Jay Albright in that respect. Uh, further working with Mark Brubaker, it has been determined that we will leave the initial funds in that um, endowment process for three years. After that, we will be able to release $30,000 a year thereafter in scholarship funds for Rochester students. Um, we continue to work with Mark Brubaker to define exactly who can apply for those scholarships. Um, there weren't any specifics within his will, but uh, working with Mark, we're trying to acknowledge those areas that he may have had a special interest in. So are very blessed by this. Um, our students in the future will be blessed by those scholarship opportunities. So very thankful um, to Tom Reed, his family, and especially to Mark Brubaker, who's been helping us through this process. Um, the, the estate did write the check to Rochester Schools and to keep um, our records uh, clean for auditing purposes, we need permission to transfer those funds over to the Community Foundation so that we can honor the outline of his will and continue to move forward um, with the Community Foundation to um, decipher and determine the specific criteria for students who want to apply for scholarship in three years. Thank you, Jan. Any uh, questions or comments? I knew Tom Reed. Uh, my husband drove bus back a, a million years ago, but he drove bus, and Tom was a bus driver then, and uh, he was a super, super nice guy and cared a lot about kids. Mm -hmm. So at this time, um, I would ask for a motion to release the funds for the estate of Mr. Reed. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Thank you. And I'll continue to keep you updated once we have the specific scholarship application determined. Great. Um, next we have the approval of claims totaling $2,012,438.89. This is that's all it is, right? Just the claims. Got it. Okay, and that would be um, January claims totaling $947,111.54 and February 1st to the 15th claims totaling $1,065,320 or $1,065,327.35. Any questions? I'm assuming that was the scholarship that is in the claims is the the 600,000 or whatever. I was just wondering that. I'm like, that's a big one. Change between months. What are you doing January? I mean, I hate to assume, but I don't remember that meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, uh, if I could have a motion to approve the claims. So moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Seven to zero. Thank you, Joe. Okay, we move on to number seven, approval of the payroll for January 28th, February 11th, and February 25th, 2022, totaling $1,371,692.59. Questions or comments? Um, I would uh, 
ask for a motion to approve the payrolls. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And the motion passes seven to zero. Moving on to student and stakeholder focus. We did a little bit of that with our uh, with our um, wrestling. We moved them up because they had this other meet going on. But very grateful to do that. Um, donations for uh, <coughs> for the through February twenty eighth. Riddle Elementary, $500 for one school, one book, and that was donated by Todd and Lisa Brooks. Riddle Elementary, $500, one school, one book, Women of the Moose. Riddle Elementary, $300, one school, one book, from Scioto's Eye. The Corporation, $2,237.50, Pack a Backpack, from Grace United Methodist Church. Riddle Elementary, $50 for Reading Counts from Sio to Zai. Columbia, Columbia Elementary, $50 for Reading Counts from Sio to Zai. Rochester, uh, Rochester School Theater, $1,300 for Triette from Sio to Zai. Rochester Middle School, $1,000 for Band from Sio to Zai. Rochester Middle School, $50 for the Library from Sio to Zai. Rochester High School, $50 for reading counts from Sio to Zai. And Riddle Elementary School, $100, one school, one book from Walmart. Um, I am always uh, amazed to see the wondrous donations that come our way on a regular basis. And uh, uh, just want to uh, give a shout out to Sio to Zai. They showed up on this form many times today. And we do appreciate all of our donors, but I know that uh, uh, Supporting uh, literacy and the arts is one of the things that are, are, are a couple of the things that are very important to Sire's Eye, so thank you for that. <clears throat> um, at this time, I'd ask um, for a motion to approve the donations. So moved. Second. And, and uh, all in favor? Aye. Seven to zero. Thank you. Moving on. Approval of making March 2nd, 2022 an e-learning day for high school students in grades 8, 9, 10, and 12. So, Mr. Haas, if you would uh, share with the board, I know that we talked about it in the study session, but um, with the listening audience and everybody here, how the state has made some changes and what you're trying to attempt um, this week with the SAT test. Yeah, so to simplify it, I guess for parents, you've always heard us talk about iLearn and iStep. The uh, Indiana Legislature and the Department of Education have made the SAT the high school version of I Learn I Step. Um, the big catch is the SAT is controlled by College Board, and College Board has a lot more stringent requirements when it comes to providing accommodations for our students that need those. We don't control that. We have to upload that to College Board, and then they tell us what to do. And so then we also have to provide certain hall monitors and bathroom monitors. To, uh, for the test and for to have the manpower to do that with all the accommodated students. Um, we kind of stole the idea from Logan Sport and are going to do e-learning for 8, 9, 10, and 12. And then our juniors come in. We have to test at least 95% of our juniors to receive 40% of our school letter grade. And so it's a pretty important tool in regards to some things um, on how the public judges us as a school corporation and school building. So just and for clarification, this is only for grades nine or eight, nine, ten, and twelve. Yes. Right? Elementaries will be in session, middle school will be in session. I've had a couple of phone calls. So this we're just talking about high school students. Yeah, and also buses are running at normal times. Absolutely. If your high school junior rides a bus, the bus will pick them up and take them home. None of the transportation is affected in regards to this. Any questions or comments from the board? And, and I missed one. They, they will be the ones taking the SAT they know test. The yeah. Okay, at this time we need a motion to approve uh, making March 
2022, an e-learning day for high school students in grades 8, 9, 10, and 12. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes 7 to 0. Um, we need to approve uh, the contract to move forward for natatorium locker room renovations at Rochester Middle School. So what I've included, we, uh, Terry Pontsbury <coughs> from Viridian is our architect. We have been working with him in regards to updating and upgrading our auditorium locker rooms. These are uh, rooms that are, um, I believe, original to Rochester Middle School. Several of the shower units are not working. We have problems with hot water. Um, above and beyond that, we need to make sure that we are ADA compliant as well as Title IX compliant. So what I'm asking for is to go ahead and sign that contract with Terry Thornsbury and Viridian so we can go ahead and start doing the uh, drawings and specs for that to go out to bid. Just because we sign this, just because we push it out to bid does not necessarily mean that we have approved the process. We'll get those quotes in and determine whether or not we have the funds to move forward within uh, the bonds that we have currently um, reserved in regards to this project. Any questions or comments? Okay, um, I need a motion to approve uh, the con moving forward with the contract for the natatorium locker room renovations at the middle school. So moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Policies. Those are always fun. Okay. And there's a list of them. There's a nice list, and I'll do my best to get them correct. You have to read them all. Please. I know. I heard. And I'm not going to read them all. I read the numbers, and y'all can look them up. Okay. <laughs> they were all available online. All right. Uh, approve. We need to approve the third reading of policies one two two zero, one two one five two zero, two two six two, two six zero three, three one two zero. 0 0.08, 3120.11, 3214, 3220.08, 4214, 5113.02, 5340.01, 5460.5540, 6120.5, 6220, 7310-7540.03, 7540.04, 8305, 8455, and 8600. This is the third reading of uh, these policies, and uh, we do discuss them in study session and, and share uh, and share out about those and then uh, we meet um, the policy committee meets regularly to uh, go over the upgrades and the, and the new things a lot of them are technical uh, or they're mandated um, and anything else we discuss at length so any questions or comment about these policies so at this time um, we need to approve the third reading of these policies I'll oh, second. Thank you. All in favor? Don't. No, don't. Yeah. Joe, are you there? Thank you, Joe. And uh, that motion passes 7 to 0. The next item on the list is approval to remove the 10 paid COVID days. Working with our CTA and in our discussions and with our HR. Um, since uh, the original virus came out and we returned to school, we were allowing for 10 paid days for teachers or any employees who were off of work due to COVID. With our change to um, a mask optional plan, with the ability for those who care to get vaccinated to have that as another level of precaution, um, and with our uh, district numbers being very, very close to zero, at this time, we would I would move that we um, 
retract those 10 paid COVID days. Should anybody become ill, they do have sick and personal days that they can use out of their own um, uh, benefits that we provide to our employees. Questions or comments from the board? And I would like to make this effective beginning tomorrow morning, March 1st. All right. So we need a uh, motion um, to propose the removal of the 10 paid COVID days. We don't have any employees out now. No, so currently no. Good. Okay. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. And the motion passes <coughs> seven to zero. The next item is approval to proceed with changing the terms of member residency to the Rochester Community School Board of Trustees as it pertains to Richland Township. We have been discussing this for um, several meetings and uh, the resolution, um, everybody got a copy of the resolution this week, right? Okay. Any questions or comments on the resolution itself? Well, I'd like to uh, just add some comments. Uh, as I stated earlier, I did find the original resolution for consolidation, and I'd like to just kind of go through the little bit of that, what I gleaned from that, and uh, uh, throw some ideas out here. So on uh, July 1st, 1964, the Rochester School Board met with the Richmond Township Trustee and Advisory Board and agreed to merge the two school systems. The new consolidation would start one year later on July 1st of 1965 at 12 o'clock noon. The assets and liabilities of Richmond Center School were assumed by the new Rochester Community School Corporation. The new six board, six member school board would consist of the trustee of Rochester Township, the trustee from Richmond Township, two members appointed by the Rochester City Council, and two members appointed by the advisory board of the Rochester, or, yeah, the Rochester Township. Uh, during the 1965-66 and the 1966-67 school years, grades six through 12 from Richland Center moved to Rochester. Grades K to five remained at Richland Center during that time and then moved to Rochester for the 67-68 school year. So there's a period of time uh, where Rochester had three elementary schools. On May 14th of 1968, the Rochester Community School Board decided to sell the Richmond Center assets at auction to the highest bidder. The Richmond Center PTA bought the school building and land for $5,200 on September 8th of 1968. When a small community loses their school, they lose their identity and purpose, especially when you don't have a town of any size. So the Richmond Center Community, found, or community uh, Association was formed. The old school became the meeting place for community activities, 4-H meetings, women's social club, and the IWF Lodge. Uh, the association had a food booth at the Fulton County Fair for many years. This kept a sense of community alive in that area. Around 1982, Kiwana School closed, and instead of a merger, the students went three different directions, uh, Winnemac, Caston, and Rochester. A seventh seat was added to the board after that time. and. Uh, before the 1994 election, it was decided to make the Rochester Board an all-elected board with seven districts. This uh, required candidates to run in the district they resided in, and uh, Richland became one of the seven. This format continued until uh, 2013, when it was becoming hard to fill some districts. Uh, I was on the board at that time, and, and uh, the all at large election process was discussed for all, uh, all members or all districts in the school corporation. Uh, the six members of the Rochester district uh, wanted to keep it at large. And at the time, the Richmond Township Community Association, Association was still somewhat active, but was headed downhill with little interest. Um, I was uh, chairman at uh, association for quite a while. And I felt at the time that an all at large would be the final nail for Richmond Township. Um, but it turns out it didn't matter because the association is now inactive. Uh, the board uh, respected my decision, I respected theirs, so now we had a hybrid board with six at large and one district. That's where we are now. 
The problems of that model arose in the 2018 election when we had the first contested election in Richland Township since the school merged. Um, this was only for Bud Walters, and my dad, Bill Meyer, and me since 1965. And we all basically had to be asked to run. Uh, so the 18 election was the first time we've had a contested election. So th these problems showed up. Um, confusion of the process caused an election where only Richland Township voters could only vote for Richland candidates and not at any of the at-large candidates. And the at-large residents could not vote for Richland candidates. This was not the way it was planned in 2013. The 2020 election, the voting process for that part of it was fixed, and all voters in the district voted for all candidates. And that was an off year for the Richland seat. Uh, but there were still some that thought a Richland uh, Township resident could run for one of the at-large seats. And this was not how it was supposed to be set up, and that didn't happen. So then we have the question, you know, if it's not broke, why fix it? Well, it is broke. If you live in a large at large district and run a run for a school board seat, you have an advantage of a shot at one of three seats every two years. Richland residents that want to run for a board seat only have a chance at one seat every four years. So there's a disadvantage there. So how do we fix it? Well, there are two ways. I know we've been talking about one way all this time. And that would be this first one. It'd be to make all seats at large. And we have a proposed resolution that would do that, and has not been voted on yet. Uh, some board members thought it'd be a good idea for Richmond Township to make the decision that affected them. I agreed. And we had an informational meeting for the residents. Uh, we had nine residents attend, and after the meeting I talked to most of them. And uh, most thought it was probably time to change or it didn't matter either way two wanted to stay the same. And since that time, I have not received any phone calls or emails about it. And uh, over the last couple years, I've talked to a lot of my neighbors. They either don't care either way or thought it would be uh, less confusing and fair that all districts were the same. Uh, recently, the Richmond Township Trustee and Advisory Board endorsed that resolution. Now, the second uh, Second item here that uh, we could correct the problem is to return all seven districts as having a seat and have it set up the way it was before that 2013 decision. And I know a lot of people like the district idea for Richland, so this would be attractive for them. And I'm okay either way. I just want a fair, even playing field and less confusion. So, you know, either one of those decisions would fine with me. I mean, if you keep the center, you know, it's all district and then uh, return all districts, all the other seats to districts too, everybody be playing on the, the same rules. So we have two decisions there. So uh, that's what I have, and if anybody has any questions about that? I think we I know we haven't talked about that second thing. Yeah, I, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Tom, for your comments. And the history, I was interested in hearing that. Um, I do think it's important that we read the resolution. Uh, for the community and those who, those who are listening. Um, concern, so this is the resolution concerning the election of Rochester Community School Board members. And this was drafted in December of 2020. Katie, okay, that was drafted in November. Of 2020? Sorry, thank you. Appreciate that. Whereas the trustees of Rochester Community School Corporation have determined that the current district alignment for the election of school board members has resulted in confusion and is no longer necessary and the merger of the Richland Township Schools in the Rochester Community Schools in 1965 was an historic event providing that the township be given status with a school board member. Originally the elected township trustee and thereafter a person from Richland Township specifically elected to the board. The provision for only one person from Rich Richland Township to be eligible for the board and that the board be separated into the current two district format in a historic anomaly with no further purpose for the benefit of the students of Rochester Community School Corporation. 
be it hereby enacted and approved by the Rochester Community School Board and the Indiana Department of Education, the election of the school board members of the Rochester Community School Corporation Board of Trustees in 2022 and thereafter shall take place as follows. Three members of the Rochester School Board elected in 2020 or their successor shall serve for four years and stand for election in 2024 in each four years thereafter as provided by state law. Four members of the Rochester School Board or their successors elected in 2018 shall stand for election in 2022 and each four years thereafter as provided by state law. All candidates shall be at-large candidates residing in the Rochester Community School District as provided by state law. Again, this resolution has not been adopted by the board and, uh, um, and was, was written a year and a half ago. Year and a half, year and a half ago. So uh, any other comments from the board? I, Katie, yeah. I would like to, if you don't mind, I'd like to make a motion and then have discussion after that motion for, um, and then if, if it's seconded and voted on, then that's fine. If nobody seconds it, then it's dead. But I do have a motion that um, the board study changing the composition of the school board to three defined districts of relatively equal size, population size, I think would be sufficient, and four at-large seats with two of the at-large seats open every two years. So, no, at the next at, 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 at a cycle where there's four elected, it would be two at large and two that represent two thirds of the district. And another um, election cycle would be two at large with the other third of the district. So my my motion is for that for a, a board committee to be established to study the feasibility of that. So I'm not necessarily saying that must that composition should be voted on tonight, but that that is a way <coughs> to move forward. And that is my we, we have a motion on the floor. Um, and any discussion on that motion? It, it sounds like it's still going to be confusing. It's a little problem, I guess. Uh, and then the people that wanted Richland separate, they'd be, they'd want them in with another section? Is that how you? I, no, I, I don't understand that. With, with the data that's available to look at whatever the district size is and divide it into um, relatively three equal pies. So Richland wouldn't be completely by itself anymore. I don't know if that includes part of the Northern Rochester Township or what, however that's most feasible. But so the, the, the board would not be all at large, but it wouldn't revert to the five um, districts that it was previous to 2013 where it was harder to find candidates so it it's yeah. so still people within those districts would have an option to run at large each of those two years you know similar to how it was before 2013 and but instead of five districts that were relatively small then there would be three districts which would then expand the pool of who could run. that's how the county council's yeah. structured and um i like that i know um one thing i don't like about this resolution um number one we never discussed it as this sitting board it was created 18 months ago and <coughs> until a week ago it was actually never officially even passed out to us it was discussed a lot um but it was never discussed amongst us, and I don't like that. I mean, pulling stuff out of the closet and saying, here, we're gonna go ahead and vote on it is ridiculous. Um, it's not fair to the public, it's not fair to us. Um, the one thing in it, though, that I really don't like is the fact that it affects this election cycle, and I don't like changing the rules of the game when we're in the middle of it. And I just, I think it looks um, in poor taste. I don't think it's fair to the Richland residents because 
if they do go at large um, this year, they actually would have that normal election cycle where it's only residents of Richland Township who are up for that seat and they have a guaranteed seat for four years. And then whatever comes out in the wash the next time around, then it's an every two year cycle and anybody from Richland Township could run, but at least they still have one person from the township in that seat for four years. And if I still live there, I would want that. I mean, why not? Um, so that's definitely one thing I don't like about this resolution and would be in favor of. I do like Jenny's idea, you know, it never hurts to actually look at stuff, throw it in a bowl and mix it up and see what comes out. So, I mean, maybe we'll get there and say, hey, this doesn't work. It is hard having seven at-large seats because you can have, you know, four, you have three can or three seats up and you could have eight different candidates, especially if Richland is gonna be at-large now and it just you still only have that same average of votes um you know in any given election so those are my thoughts any other comments from the board well i think you know this has been on the burner but i think covid's kind of got thrown in there and mm -hmm. kind of put it on the back burner and, um, it, i'd just like to see it simplified and fair for everybody. I mean, once you start having uh, at large and districts, you, you kind of run into problems there. Anything else from the board? Just to keep it simple. Um, and before we put anything to a vote, uh, are there any comments from the community? Mark, Mr. Martin. Yeah, thank you. Um, I. I'm in favor of if we're going to take if the board is looking at making a change, I think it's wise to look at options, not necessarily one, but multiple. I and I will say on the surface, I I would be in favor of if the if the problem was due to the fact that the various districts in the past were maybe too small, uh, maybe that was the issue. I don't. I was living through that, but I, I don't know what the exact reasons were other than I know people were asked to run. And I think that happens, Tom, in, in a lot of situations where mm -hmm. the public gets asked to step up and, and help out, and I, and I get that. Um, I'm not sure, if my, my memory serves me right, um, while perpetuity wasn't necessarily the word used, there was no end date in that uh, it wasn't for any of the seats. Pardon? It wasn't for any of them. I mean, if that's I mean, the case, from the, when Richland Center joined, the that resolution did not and did not have a, an ending date. Which, if I remember right, that was one of the things for, we kind of discussed in the last. Yeah, as an ending date for what though? For when, when the board seat for Richland Center would yeah. disappear. They. Uh, but but I, I, it didn't I, specify them out separate. It has them all together, you know, where I read about the county council point. So if that was the case, uh, none of us here would be legal because all these seats have been changed at least once since then. I understand. So, but that, that's the power that the board has. Yeah. So but I, yeah. I would encourage the board to uh, give the uh, motion that Mrs. Smith made uh, some serious consideration to me that seems to make having study whether it turns out to be three district districts or two districts or ten districts or whatever uh, I think it's worthwhile I think that's seven districts excuse me. Uh, it, it, it makes sense to me to, to take the time to, to do it the right way uh, I, I wasn't convinced that the past the, the proposals that were on the table were necessarily the right way to go so and I do, I do, I appreciate your comments, uh, Mrs. Coles, regarding the uh, change in midstream here. I, I think having this election cycle proceed as as it has in the past is a is a wise thing. So, on, Jenny, on yours now, you included at large in districts. Yes, and for my my motion is to have that be a study, but that would be a jumping off in that, so yeah. that it would be similar to in the past, but. It would be fewer districts, so 
it would be larger districts and therefore hopefully easier to find people within those districts who were in that. See, I, I could go for that without having at large, just have districts. I don't know if it's ever been that. Because, because once you throw at large, I mean, we're starting to mix that up again. We're, you know, we have some at large, and if we just keep it, like Mark's saying, bigger districts. Well, I think that's the point of the study well, session. You take all that, you throw mud on yeah. the wall, you see what sticks. I mean, we don't have to make any decisions on that tonight. I mean, the motion is just to form that study committee yeah, and go forward and look what would be best. I personally think some at large in some district is a great idea. I mean, it's... Well, because seven districts would make them even smaller than the yes, five districts yes, in the past because yes. it's the same pie. Well, right. just a Why change? I mean, you guys just voted in 13 to change it to all at large because of candidacy problems. Why go back to... Why go back to districts? What, what's the what's the benefit of going back to districts? That would be something that would, could be part of the study. I would say that I don't know of any other school board or other board, maybe in general, that is all at large. And I think there's um, an opportunity for more, more consistency in seats when you have at least some districts. There could also be, depending upon how the districts were divided, sometimes and that's i think how they were originally divided was because you were you were running to support the interests of your district and we still do have enough differences in um, demographics within our school system that you know if one district ends up being very um, agricultural heavy perhaps that has a different um, perspective than maybe somebody who if the district is very lake heavy you know that kind of thing that's mm -hmm. It, that's how our county council is, is how our city council is, that, that they both have at large seats and districts because of them. Um, Would there be overlap? I mean, is it, does that overlap where at large persons can also run from the district? Correct. And of course. To make sure yeah. I was understanding that correctly. Yes. Thank so you. you would have, so everyone in, in this situation, or no matter how you divided districts, if you went back to five or state or three or whatever, it would be that every single um, constituent lived in a district so they could run when it is their time their district's time but they could also choose to run at large and right now I, I get what Tom's saying with the system that we have now we have one tinier district that cannot run at large there's some positives to that there's some negatives to that but I that's why my motion would be to look at what would it be like to keep districts but in divided in a different way instead of going all at large the, the districts were abolished and then since then that would start in 14 correct there's not been i mean back to my election in 18 the election in 20 uh, election i don't know 16 i think that was that brad weaver selection or is it 14. weaver in 26 14. 14. Weaver is 14 I believe. okay so 14. there has been more candidates than seats since you guys have changed yeah. starting at 14 there has not been a lack of candidacy problem what started this entire discussion was a group of individuals were not able to vote for everybody and it's led to possibly changing a seat for again no candidacy problem there either because he was he was opposed I, I don't I mean we, we've talked about if it's not brick, broke, don't fix it, but it's not broke. I mean, you're getting, and you're talking from districts, when you look at where we live around the county, we're, we're spread around the county already. And I, I just, I don't understand a lack of consistency. I don't, that's not ringing to me. What kind of consistency do you want? Like where you have a member that's on, I mean, you want members on here for 12 and 16 years at a time? Because that's not good either. And that's another discussion. Well, we can disagree. We, can, we sure, may disagree absolutely. on that because I think it's very important to have consistency on the board. And I don't mean that all seven stay the same all the time. I don't think that's healthy. But training a complete new board every two to four years is not, um, I don't think that that provides a consistency for the administration and staff and um, the, the long-term planning of a district two to lose all of that institutional knowledge. By the way, changing to districts would not guarantee that by any means, because obviously districts can have um, multiple people run. If you have, you could have a district and have four people sign up to run for those that one seat. That would be 
you know, that choice of that person. But, and again, my motion is to study that. I do think that this has brought up important discussions, and so to just say, okay, well, we're done with it if we don't vote for the resolution as presented, I, I think it would be a missed opportunity to find out more about how we could move forward. Okay. I, uh, the part that I meant that uh, about being broke, not necessarily the amount of people running, it's about the fairness of you know what we talked about, the two-year, four-year thing. So that, that's the part that's the worst part of being broke. Ethan, you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I, I was wondering. Uh, I think it definitely uh, holds merit to study alternative solutions. Um, I do think that in the event this resolution didn't pass, it would be kind of a shame to have all this discussion and, and just kind of let it sit for another long while. But I had some questions about, in this motion, the function of the study committee. Would that be something that was to be discussed at like every study session or something, or would it be primarily private? Because I feel like with regards to candidacy issues and stuff potentially coming up in the future, stuff like public input or study of the public opinion would be uh, not necessarily of the most value to the committee out of all possible things you could study, but pretty highly ranked in value. Yeah, I, I agree, Ethan, and I think that it wouldn't necessarily be that every, you know, like, um, yeah. Casey, I think when we mentioned, just briefly mentioned this at the study, it was a study session, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> earlier in the month, was talking about how she likes to look at demographic data and pull that kind of stuff, you know, she wouldn't necessarily have to do that with a bunch of discussion around, but if Katie, if this motion passes and, and it would, then it would be up to Katie to establish the committee and let's say she chose, Casey wanted to be on it, then those, um, that information, that committee would bring that information to public study sessions to discuss it. And I don't know, I, I haven't been specific in my motion about the makeup of that committee. That would be up to the president. But if she chose to involve people beyond the school board, that would be her right to do. In an election year, four seats up, potentially four new members sitting on the board starting in January. I don't know, you can take it as you want, but I, who knows what their ideas will be brought in. And most likely, you know what, there will be a Richland Center resident of some kind if, if that resolution doesn't pass. I, I don't, I mean, you, you can put it on the agenda and start studying it, but I think it, the new members coming in in the next year should have a voice as well. And I, I mean, I'm not in favor of, of doing anything to change anything with new members coming in, including my seat that will be vacated. So. Yeah, like Kyle said, I'm not running again, so I thought well, this might be a good time as far as the Richland seat, because then I, I, you know, I don't have any skin in the game because I'm not going to be running again. So. But yeah, it, it needs discussion, and just as long as we find something fair. Uh, bigger, like bigger districts, you'd have a bigger pool in each district. I mean, uh, less districts, but bigger districts. You'd have a you know bigger pool of people, so that would that'd be good too. So yeah, I mean, Mark, did you have another comment? Yeah, I, to me, it's representation. And I think when you have districts, then whatever those, wherever those happen, the lines happen to be. It's, there's a little bit of comfort in knowing that there's someone that's representing me specifically rather than someone just at all, at large. And, uh, you know, if everybody's at large, the likelihood of this happening is probably slim to none, but they could be neighbors in one neighborhood, potentially, mm -hmm. with a the board. And, I, and I'm not, I like the idea that there are districts available so that Richland Center, if it's Richland Center or whatever, our sense, I mean, that would be who would I go to and, and be discussing with the representation. So I, I like that. I mean, that, and that's what it boils to me. It is representation that I feel ownership with. So you're saying do away with all at large sheets and have just districts? No. Mm -hmm. What am I hearing then? I, I I think it's a good blend. Well, four at large, you could have four neighbors still. Sure. Okay. Or you but, but, but where I where I'm at, yep. I will have representation. You do now. Uh, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> and I think Don, Tom's done a fine job, and I appreciate that. Thank you. So okay. there's not an end date on my motion, as far as like by, and maybe I should put that out there. But I, to Kyle's point of, I'm not saying that the study committee should have a decision to the board by August or something. So yeah. right, uh, you know, but. 
It would take quite a while just to get the demographics and stuff around and to even get an outline. You know, well, if we did do that. And, and again, I'm sorry, go ahead. And when you would still have to submit it to the State Board of Education right. as well. Yeah. So. It's well, a lengthy process. I yeah, think that's uh, the thing we're kind of pushed up against. So, yeah, yeah it, if we need more time, we can't do it this year. I think um, Mr. Martens made a good point in that, uh, well, not interrupting me, but I went that train of thought, you know, because I'm over 60 and that's what happens. Okay. Um, just in, in the sense that uh, everyone will have re representation if we do something along that line. But, um, and Ethan, I'll let you get to your point. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say with regards to like an end date or, or weariness, weariness about. Um, new board members having different input uh, there's the potential that something of, a, of this sort of study committee could be a, a semi-permanent thing in the event that a change in demographics or a change in uh, the flow of students in and out in any future situation comes up it could be something that's always like a back burner part of board policy if that would be more uh, kind of helpful to any future situations as well. You wouldn't have to worry necessarily about an end date. Um, maybe just some sort of uh, some sort of way to bring it back if ever needed, and then you could always just let it fizzle out naturally when you've made a decision. Okay. Yeah. It makes. I'm, I understand what you said. That's great. Um, I think that as we as we move forward, I'm a little bit. Are there any other comments from the from the public at this time? Any other from the board? Kyle, you've been kind of quiet. All right. Um, I'm a little confused about point of order here because we were discussing the resolution. So I think it would be prudent to vote on the resolution before us, or because that would pass it. Never mind. Okay, wait a minute. Not. It just depends on how it goes. Okay. But I saw your face go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, the the second part, but then with a motion in the middle of a discussion. I'm not sure where to go from here. The discussion was just how to proceed. So how the discussion proceed. was not about the resolution that was written last year that we've never seen publicly in front. It's never been presented to this right. board publicly. So there is no resolution, as far as I'm concerned, unless we read it tonight and say, this is what we want to do. You know, motion to read this and accept it as that. But the motion on the table is, let's proceed with a study session. And that would just be how we would proceed. So that point of order is OK, because we we sometimes flip things because it's because most of our things are um, don't require a lot of discussion to approve the claims doesn't usually require a lot of discussion but really discussion should come after the motion so you know what you're discussing right so that's why I had asked if I could make that motion so that, that we could discuss that and then if someone seconds it then we would be able to vote on it if nobody seconds it it dies okay as the uh, proposed resolution we you don't have to act on that unless somebody brings it up so. all right Thank you. Um, I'll second Jenny's motion. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor of Jenny's motion to do a study, demographic study, and look at options for our school board. All in favor. Joe, Joe? Are you still on? Still here. Yep. Okay. So uh, the motion passes four to three. You technically should have them say that they're against, so you know that they're not. Okay, and, and all those opposed? Aye. Thank you. The motion passes four to three. If I may, before we move on to the next um, topic, just hearing, I, I think it's important that people understand the difficulty of public education right now and to know that two people have already shared that their seats are going to be vacated and we need good community members to run is indicative of what's happening in public education so a sincere thank you to this board who is currently setting i see behind the scenes the amount of time and energy and oftentimes thankless job that this is so thank you for the work that you are doing thank you Jana. thank you okay take a deep breath Okay. Mm -hmm. Approval of the RCSC 2021-2022 amended safe school reopening policy. <laughs> what did I miss something? No, just 
feels the like it's all yeah. So, yeah. No, it's just let's talk TV about COVID. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah, we haven't spent any time on COVID in the last since I joined the board. <laughs> was elected to the board two years ago or a year and a half ago, and so we're looking at uh, we have new information yep. regarding bus transportation. Sure. This is Jan. So even though we had a board meeting just a week ago to uh, redefine our reopening plan. Um, there have been there has been yet one more change. I believe it was on Friday, the 25th. It was announced that the CDC and Indiana Department of Health have now said that students do not need to mask on buses. That it can be an optional mask wearing. So I have updated the reopening plan to um, accommodate and be in compliance with the Indiana Department of Health and the CDC's recommendations to public schools. Um, the bus drivers have done a wonderful job of venting the buses, sanitizing the buses after every route. Um, this is just that next logical step in the reopening plan and keeps us in compliance. Do they still need to sanitize and still do yeah, that? Yeah, they'll still need to sanitize. And I think some things, Tom, are just good practices that we've learned um, about health in general. So that's something that we can continue to do and I would recommend. Okay, and it reads now, or is that up there? Okay, yeah. it reads here. Um, if this is page two, section four, bus transportation, part A. All students or children, regardless of age or grade, all faculty, all staff, all vendors, all contractors, all volunteers, and all visitors shall have the option to wear masks while on public transportation, including Rochester community school buses and school-owned vehicles. Any questions from the board or comments? Questions or comments from the public? So we will entertain a uh, motion to uh, approve the revision to the amended safe school reopening policy. So moved. Second. All in favor? Absolutely. Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Okay. Throw them things in the trash. Maybe a nail and a hammer. Ah, and I should, went, to, I went somewhere today and had had to have a mask, had to run out the current day for one. Okay. Um, the next thing is the um, second reading of policy 2370.03. And that is the Indiana uh, Course Access Program. And that talks about um, accessibility. Where's, where's Oscar? You want to talk about it? Where it is? You know where it is? The ICAPS, the ability for students to take courses should under limited circumstances. I don't know. The policy has been <laughs> the policy right here. Yeah. I mean, I can. So. Yeah. This is the second reading, so uh, that's up to you, Oscar. I guess I put you on the spot. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a lengthy application process to go through the DOE. We're not quite ready for that yet, but the way that policy changes, if we get there, we will be able to do that swiftly. Okay. So it opens the door for us to begin that process if we need to. Okay. So the recommendation from Mrs. Jan is that we. Um, well, that's just the second reading. Oh, the second reading. We're not doing anything with it. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. And faculty and staff focus the um, personnel report. I'm going to either need new glasses or a larger <laughs> font. That's all I need. Okay. Um, recommendations, Olivia Medina, RMS instructional aid. Uh, and do I need to read the hourly rates? Is that okay? Uh, new hourly rate of twelve fifty nine per hour. Brittany Geller, Columbia Special Needs IA, hourly rate twelve fifty nine. Spring intercession recommendations, Rochester Middle School. Nate Basham, teaching position at his hourly rate. Eric Davis, teaching position at his hourly rate. Joanna Twalt. IA position at her hourly rate. Ryan, uh, RHS, Ryan Held, English Language Arts. Lucy Hernandez, English Language Arts. Deborah Wolford, Math. Ken Hughes, Math. And these say just hourly rate because that's based on uh, the teacher's uh, contract. Summer Reading Program, Megan McLaughlin, Director of Program. Uh, rate to be determined at a later date. Contract changes. Ryan Siegert changed from three years experience to nine years experience. His salary will go from $43,700 to $50,350. Eric Davis changed from 18 years of experience to 19 years of experience. 
his salary will go from $60,700 to $61,850. Ron Schaefer, change prep time to class time for second semester, 2021-2022 school year, pay based off existing contract. Athletic recommendations, Tim Strasser, volunteer coach, boys varsity golf program. Mike Nixon, RMS golf coach. Um, athletic resignations, Linnea, is it Strasser? Mm -hmm. Seventh grade volleyball coach. Jamie Smiley, eighth grade volleyball coach. Brian Jennings, RHS girls basketball coach. John Walkman, RMS basketball coach. Daniel Bailey, RMS eighth grade basketball coach. Family leave request, Alexis McSherry <clears throat> from February 11th, 2022 to May 6, 2022. Nikki Overmeyer from May 8th, 2022 for approximately six weeks. Wendy Scobie, intermittent days. And we have resignations of James Davis and Aubrey Troyer as of March 11th, 2022. Any questions on? You'll need to pull Megan out. Yeah, we need to pull Megan out. Thank you. Vote on her separately. Yes. Right. So with the exception of uh, Megan <coughs> Laughlin, can I have a motion to approve the personnel recommendations? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. And specifically looking at the summer reading program, Megan McLaughlin, director of the program, um, could I have a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. And yes. One okay, we have one abstention and six uh, six yes votes, so that also passes. The next is the superintendent's report. First of all, I would like to thank Mr. Keel. I know he's walking out the door. I don't know if we can stop him for a minute. I'm sorry. I, I was, <laughs> they thought they were off the hook. I was able to spend time with the girls on Saturday and just want to thank Mr. Keel for his dedication to the Girl Scouts. I believe there are 11 to 12 girls there that I got to spend time with on Saturday. So thank you for that opportunity, but for also bringing the young ladies here to learn more about public service and, and the processes that we go through. So I, I enjoyed myself Saturday. Thank you. We appreciate you coming. Thank you. Um, principals, Cassie, um, if you guys, as we go through this, want to share out something that you've been working on that's exciting, promising, um, something that you're working on behind the scenes that you would like the board to know, and then any help or support that I could provide or the board at large could, could provide. Sure. Um, something exciting, you guys may not know, this is very exciting, the sixth and seventh graders. We had our annual dodgeball tournament <laughs> this past couple <laughs> weeks. And if you need a little joy in your life, please come and see us during lunchtime because how much they care about dodgeball is amazing. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah, we, fifth grade isn't quite done. Tomorrow is the championship game because they had a couple more teams than the rest of the grades. So before you move on, Mr. Martens, do you have any dodgeball stories? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, tomorrow's game is the boys. Spelled phenomically, yes. <laughs> versus the soccer moms. So that's wow. tomorrow's championship game. The soccer moms? Yep. Okay. And, and it's an all boy team. It's all boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love those names. Yeah. Something else, uh, just kind of working on somewhat behind the scenes, but maybe some of you know, because I know we had it approved, our um, enrichment trip over spring break. We have 27 kiddos going to Camp Tecumseh, an overnight trip. Um, they talk about leadership. They work on, um, they have these different, it, there's an optimist thing, there's a mountain they have to climb, it's teamwork, um, leadership, all kinds of good stuff. So 27 kids, that's a lot. We also have four staff members going, so that's great. great. I don't need anything, just looking forward to seeing you all next week for the board walker. Jason? Yeah, um, we have got uh, some of the good things that are going on. This is, not something that, that um, 
Well, I'll just share with you. In the last like couple of months, we've had somebody randomly just going around to our staff members every day, um, taking flowers and delivering flowers to two or three of our teachers, our instructional assistants, our nurse, our any, anyone, any of our, our staff, and, and they've been doing that every day for the last couple of months. And we're to the point where every person in our building has been brought flowers at some point. And the, the my staff uses the term, you know, uh, flower fairy. And, you know, the, the flower fairy got me today and everybody always sends emails. And it's just a, for me, because of course, if I've got something like that going on in my building, you know I'm going to figure out who it is and watch the cameras. <laughs> so I happen to know what's, what's actually taking place. But I mention it just because, you know, in a, in a tough time, um, you know, and, and a lot going on and everybody having to every day kind of shift around and, and help each other out. Um, it's, been, it's been very nice uh, for the, that person and, and I, I'm sure that, uh, you know, the, the, it's just been a really nice thing for our staff to take care of each other, uh, to know that they're supported and to have a staff members putting so much time and money and energy into such a nice thing is uh, just something I want to recognize to the, to the ferry that's walking around our halls and keeping me on my toes with my, my camera skills, but um, that's, <laughs> that's something that's been going on. Uh, the, to, to kind of piggyback on your enrichment, um, we have got uh, two enrichments set for uh, Riddle and Columbia uh, this spring break. Uh, we're going to do the bowling one like we always do because we always get that filled up and uh, filled up one. We pack that bowling alley. Um, and within 24 hours, we completely maxed out the, the uh, return forms and, and had it completely filled. Um, and then we were bringing the zoo uh, from Fort Wayne down. Uh, for enrichment as well, and we've got two sessions set for that. One for all of our, our intercession kids. So Luke and I, all of our intercession kids are going to get an opportunity to um, have the zoo just to themselves, uh, kind of as a thank you, and that's on our last day of intercession, you know, for coming and give them a, a, an hour of zoo time with them. And then we've got uh, a ton of other, I think I checked this morning and we were up to 93 just from Columbia, and I don't know where he's at on his um, sign up but I mean we're going to probably be pushing 150 kids for that um, that as well so uh, those are two good things things behind the scenes um, I mean I know it probably doesn't seem possible but at Columbia we start enrollment basically now we're enrolling our pre-k kids um, we have our um, kindergarten roundup coming up in April um, we're already taking um, the the applications and everything uh, and the registration stuff for kindergarten for next year so uh, we're, we're, we're real deep into to that uh, kind of behind the scenes and um, there's nothing that, that we need right now so maybe a full week of school and that's nobody's fault don't, not, don't take that <laughs> but, you know it's uh, that's that's what we got going so I got hit by the flower fairy today too and I was mm -hmm. wondering where they were from because I hadn't heard about because I'm not in you know well, emails and stuff. I'm here's what I tell you, it, it might as well be paranormal because it's amazing <laughs> at the amount of flowers that this person has brought into our building. I mean you think about it, I've got 60 to 70 staff members and every one of them has been has been hit and I'm not talking about a single flower. Oh I'm yeah it was a nice little bouquets like, of hand done flowers and um, and I think it's because that person is, um, is cares cares for their staff cares for the school and and just wants uh, to take care of each other and, and, and help each other through with their days and let them know that they're they're uh, thank you know they're, they're glad they're here so it's, it's much appreciated sounds like a really great idea and if you ever meet the flower fairy would you let them know that we appreciate it as well? Absolutely. Uh, our big thing right now is one school, one book. So that's we're right in the middle of it. It's awesome. Um, we'll be wrapping up on Friday morning. Uh, all our Riddle families are invited for our family night on this Thursday, 5.30 to 7. You're also invited. And also on Friday morning when we wrap up as a school, you have time at 8.30. We'll be wrapping up there and reading our last chapter. So 
Thank you to all the donors that you saw uh, today. Uh, it's a great program. I have to give a huge shout out to the staff that goes, a tremendous amount of work goes into this and they, they take care of it all. I mean, there is a lot of things. Um, parents are donating items to go with the activities for Thursday night and things like that. So it really is a community effort and uh, a lot of work behind the scenes with the staff to put this together. So uh, just thank you to everybody that supports it and I hope we get to see some people out there. So, hot dogs and chips. <laughs> so hot dogs and chips on Thursday. I'll be on bingo is what I was told. So I'll be <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm a greeter, so I'll greet you at the door, Kyle. I was on bingo Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. oh, hey, yeah. Oscar. Um, so we've had some divers go to regional. We had our wrestlers here tonight. But our big uh, thing that we've done here recently is we had FFA week. As I told the student body at the end of the FFA celebration on Friday, that's where I get my gift of being able to stand in front of them or their parents and talk for 20 minutes about nothing over and over and over again if I need to. Um, but we had goats, we had cows, we had dogs, we had all sorts of animals in the uh, building back in the ag shop. And then we ended um, with Mrs. Agenson, myself, Mr. Siegert, even Mr. Screeton, uh, getting in the dunk tank with the FFA kids. <laughs> big cornhole tournament, um, but the highlight of the day was uh, Mrs. Shally with her hot red lipstick and the pig <laughs> in the gym, so um, we had, had a good time there. I made me kiss the rear end of the pig. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you get the rear ends? Well, because Jesse, Atkinson and I, who are team teachers, were the top two, and so the FFA, hashtag Dryden Vance, decided it would be a good idea if we both kissed it, and since I raised more money than Jesse, I got the rear end. Oh, that was a surprise. Was it was a baby Duroc. Yeah, it was a piglet. Baby it was like, yeah. He was super, he pooped right before I kissed him. So. Better than Duroc. Eddie kissed a pig one time, and they brought in, I swear, a a seven-year-old sow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting a cute little baby pig. No, he was cute. It's not like But the best thing about the week was all the money that was raised for Kiss the Pig, uh, they paid to play cornhole, um, paid to do some basket shooting in the shop, and all the money raised throwing softballs. Sometimes I felt like at me when I was sitting in there, not at the bar. Um, <laughs> went towards our student, um, Rachel Ways. So not only did we have a great time, we also raised money for a very important person in our Rochester High School family. So that's what we got going on as far as needs. I don't know, I'm still learning. I'm learning every day. So I'll let you know when I have something, <laughs> need something. So, But we're plugging and chugging over there with some great things going on. First German in history is always on the job. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Anything else from uh, from the group? Anything else from the community? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Jim Frost. I'm the chair of the Democratic Committee for Fulton County, and we had a student uh, request uh, to form a Democrat club in this school, and I was wondering if I could get a time frame upon that because we have a state trainer that we can make get available for that person. Um, um, but I want to. I've been working with the student. Yeah. We have a study session coming up, so we take that through the study session process first. Okay. And then from there, um, we'll make a motion um, at the next board meeting. Okay, cool. Thank you very and she's much. She's been doing a terrific job of reaching Absolutely. out to me. All of the paperwork's completed and, and on my desk, and she's got all of her ducks in a row. And so it's an Yeah, I was just stuff. introduced to her last week, yeah. and she's a. Uh, uh, we're looking forward to having her. Sure, sure. She she communicated over the weekend and was very pleasant about this. Thank you. Any other uh, comments? <coughs> this time I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? <laughs> All right. All right. Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. I have a lot of.